Welcome back. Josh Taylor in tonight for Rich Walsh. Paul Zeiss joining me in studio. Taking your calls, 412-575-2600 on the Bordis and Bordis hotline. Also taking your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. We'll start out on Twitter here. Actually, it's been pretty quiet on Twitter. A lot more high school football talk as far as scores coming in. Don't forget, 1120 high school highlights, seven games of highlights for you to get to. So we will start with Will in Monroeville. Will, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, good evening, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for taking my call, Josh. Um, I wanted to talk and ask you a Steeler question, if I could. Go for it. I wanted the Hall of Fame list for 2018 came out with the eligible names on it. Mm -hmm. and of course, as always, there's a lot of Steelers on it this year coming up for next year. Do you legitimately think that any of our players have a shot for next year, like maybe Seneca or Coach Cowher? Well, here's the thing, because when you're talking players and you're talking coach, and thank you for the call, that might be a different scenario. Because if you're talking players, you're talking Fanica, Heinz Ward, that list, Joey Porter, and then you're talking Bill Cowher, a head coach, you're really going by two really separate sets of criteria here. So it's really hard to pick and try to lump those guys together. If you want to ask me player, I think would probably be the first that I would pick. I would probably go Alan Fanica. That would be my first guess as far as player. Do I think Bill Cowher has a good shot? As a coach, I, I don't know. Paul, i, I got to ask you about this one because the, the, the criteria for selecting coaches versus players, it, it's, really, it's really by a different, completely different set of standards. So it's really yeah, much harder to gauge. And coach. I would have to see who the other coaches on the list right. are. Because, right. but, you know, Cowart to me is a real borderline Hall of Famer. I would, Very I would borderline. I mean, I think he did, you know, obviously has a pretty good record, got to how many AFC title games, but, you know, he only won one Super Bowl. Um, and so, I don't know. I would have to really take a look at who else is there. I, I personally, my feel says Cowher's probably not quite a Hall of Famer. Or at least not this time around. Then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even, you know, I don't know if his body of work is quite what I would consider. But, you know, who knows? I mean, because there's a lot of different things that go on. The problem I think that Heinz Ward would have is, Randy Moss is, a, is eligible next That's year. That's what's going to hurt him. And <laughs> also, hurt him. Randy T. Moss is pretty much in, right? And also, T.O. should have been in this year. He should have been still in. This year. He's still eligible. I'm, I would assume they wanted to punish him because right. he was a mean guy. So that's two receivers next year that are far better, uh, you know, far better in terms of Hall of Fame careers than Heinz Ward. Fanica, I think, is the one that has the best chance to be the next Steeler. That's again. what I think. He, he got pretty close the last time around. So yeah. I would imagine he's probably, if he's not there, it's first and goal, for lack of a better analogy. I think he'll get in. I, I don't know that Heinz Ward will, but I think he will. Fanica. I think Heinz Ward will eventually. It might take him a while. Just because, like you mentioned, there's a couple of guys with better resumes that are waiting in front of him to get in line, and he's going to have to stand in queue to get his turn to walk into Canton. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to Saltzburg. Joey, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, guys, I had a question for you. I saw all the fines that Shazier, Gay, and uh, Will Cox had gotten this week, $25,000 each. And I, then I went back and I was watching the hits that they gave that they got the fines for. And all those hits, except for maybe the one, all looked like legal hits. And the one came on that play where the rest threw a flag after looking at the scoreboard. The Will Gay hit, uh, right. Shouldn't that eliminate that one right there? Because doesn't the rule book say it has to be called on the field? Well, if you ask Mike Tomlin, and thank you for the call, if you ask Mike Tomlin, he felt like it should have been eliminated because he felt that they used the scoreboard to make that call. So by his logic, sure. The Ryan Shazier call is the only one I'm going to disagree with. And, and you don't have to like whether or not the hit was really a, a legal hit or not. It's the letter of the rule of hitting the quarterback right. when he slides. That, that really is what it is. It's one of those things where you may hate the call, but you probably should hate the rule more because it's the rule that's determining why that, that hit's being flagged. Again, you know, people, it's not really that hard to figure out here. I mean, quarterbacks make how much money? Mm -hmm. And as you see each week, evidence, if you don't have a quarterback, you have probably a really bad team. I mean, did you try and watch that? Oh, game the other night between Cincinnati and Houston. Oh, now, I think Deshaun Watson is kind of dynamic and might actually turn into a good player. And he's a rookie that still but, has a way. And he's a about. rookie, but right. the, re the, the reality is right now he's not a good quarterback. Right. And Andy Dalton is just. He's been around for a while. Oh. He was bad. I mean, Andy <laughs> Dalton, to, you know, he's sort of like, Twice. you know, you know who Andy Dalton is to the Bengals? He's Charlie Morton to the, you know, to the Pirates. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Shows you just enough where you think, okay, maybe this guy's okay, and then you realize uh, it's still just the same Charlie Morton. Ooh, hearing that. Same get- thing with Andy Dalton. Hearing like, that analogy if, if gave me Bengals gas just fan, now. Wow. If I'm a Bengals fan, I want to see AJ McCarron play. I mean, or something. I it I. I don't even cheer for the Bengals. I don't even like the Bengals. I don't even watch the Bengals that much. And I'm tired of watching Andy Dalton play. And they've already fired their offensive coordinator, and I don't even think it'll be enough. I mean, again, that, that, that to me, you know, like I said, it's just shuffling. Like I said on Twitter, it's shuffling the, you know, rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. Because next Pretty up much. is Marvin Lewis is gone. You know, I mean. It has to happen after this season. Look, this keeps up, look, right? you know, I, 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 I've been a guy that has tried to support Marvin Lewis for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> but, boy, he makes it so difficult. And then he goes and signs a guy like Burfick for three more years. I, I just <sighs> I just don't know. I mean, that Bengals team is just so, bruh. It might be, it might be time for a new stop for, uh, for Marvin Lewis. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to John in Green Tree. John, you're on the Nightly Sports Hey, call. thanks for taking my call. How you doing today, man? Good. How you doing? Good, man. Uh, do you think the Steelers can beat the Vikings? Man, you got two good teams, man. You got the Vikings going up against the Steelers, and you got the Steelers going up against the Vikings, man. Do you think the Steelers can beat the Vikings? Thank you. I think we just won the record for the fastest call. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, why not? <laughs> of course I think they can beat the Vikings, especially if they play better than they did against Cleveland. Um, I think the offense will be better in this game. I think if only by default the offense will be better. I think we could see – I think the difference in this game is I think the struggle may come more as far as how the secondary responds. Because if Minnesota's offense, Paul, is as in sync and well-timed and efficient as it was against New Orleans, this might be a tougher game for the defense. The offense I expect to respond better just because you're not going to get Le'Veon Bell's lowest total yard outage of his career every week. It's just not possible. I do so think, I expect that to yeah, be Yeah, I do think Minnesota's got a pretty good defense, though. They do, too, and that it, makes it, it a little bit more complicated. Here's the thing. I think you've got two re- – you know, I think – Pittsburgh is better than Minnesota, but I think Minnesota's a good team, so it's going to be a, probably a good NFL game, you know? It, it it'll be a better one. It won't sound if it's 24 to 20 or something, you know what I mean? There's a reason why it's being played on a Sunday instead of a Thursday, because it'll be a better game. Exactly. Well, I mean, that game last night, I was like, boy, this is brutal. Why, you know, like... Why are there Thursday games? Yeah, well, it, here's the thing. That's a game you should t- tuck away on Sunday at 1. That should buried, not be nationally televised. Buried as your last option on yeah. CBS. That should be it just in those two viewing markets and uh, nowhere else. That was really bad. This game should not be televised. But to, yeah. to answer John's question, I, I expect this game to be a lot more competitive between these two teams. And the Steelers cannot afford to make the same mistakes they made last week because they can mess around and lose a game. But all things, uh, all things considered, I agree with you. I think the Steelers are still a better team as far as the collective of it all. And I think they should win this game. Whether or not they cover... Ask me in a couple days. Yeah, they'll be. That'll be interesting. What <laughs> is it? What is it? Area. Three and a half, four and a half, something like that. I, I think it's down to four and a half. Uh, Greg in Johnstown, real quick before we take a break. Greg, you're on the nightly sports call. Uh, this calls for Paul. Paul, your son's a very, very good football player, an outstanding tackler, and I'm sure you're very proud of him. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, he's got to get better. That's all. I, I mean, he's 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 getting there, uh, and I appreciate it. He's got a lot to learn, though. You know, this was only his second uh, game ever last week playing linebacker. So, you know, man, I'm dad. I'm never, you know. That's never satisfied. I'm man. never satisfied. I mean, that's, I, that's I'll, just. I'll, I'll be the guy that jumps in with the caller in this one. I was very impressed by some of the open field tackles that he made last week. I guess he, so. He's made a really good progression. He's got to get better. But he did okay. I mean, I'd agree with that. You'll see someday. When you got kids, you'll see someday. The, 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 the dad's <laughs> critique is never the same as everybody else. Fair enough. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Maybe more dad critiques from Paul. We'll see. Stick around. <laughs> 